Hello, everyone. Welcome to files.com. Two of the main reasons people tell us they use our platform is that they want to save time and money while securing their files. Here is one of the latest features we've added to help you do both. We call it Remote Server Mount, or RSM. You're already used to the security and user management features that you have with files.com. What if you could extend those features to use with resources that you might interact with outside of our ecosystem? Let's see what that looks like. Here is an SFTP server that I'm connected to that is not related to files.com. It's a plain and simple, no frills server and lacks the user management features that you would want if you were working with a busy dynamic team. So the question is, how do we give our team of users on files.com access to the files here on this remote SFTP server while still taking advantage of the security features and the permissions that are built into our site that we have here? Well, to start with, we first have to make a connection to this remote server. So we're going to go to settings, integrations, remote servers, and you can see that I've got an SFTP server set up here. Let's click edit and take a look at that. This is the server here. So we've got the host name, the port. I've got my credentials saved in here. And so this server is ready to connect. Now note that when you're making a connection to a remote server, you're not limited to SFTP. You can use FTP, Box, Azure, any of these services and protocols. And since this is an SFTP server, that's what we use to make this connection. So we've got our server set up. So the next thing is, let's go back and make a folder. And we'll call this SFTP server. And let's open this. This is right now, just like any other folder on your site, but we're now going to go into folder settings and let's scroll down until we see remote server mount. This is the RSM feature that we mentioned earlier. Click on that. Now we're going to add a new remote server mount. And when we choose the server we're going to use, you'll see there's only one here. If you had multiple selections, you would see them all here. So you choose the one that you want. And for the remote path, I've got this named giant file store. So let's go ahead and put that in there. That is the uh, folder that we want to access on the remote. And that's all that we have to do there. And you'll see once we save that, here are the files. Same files here, same files here. You'll also notice that when we look at this folder, it does look a little different. If we go up to this folder, which is just a normal files.com folder, it shows us that it's stored in the USA region and it says files.com. And if we go to any of our other folders, they look like that. But when we go back to this SFTP server folder that we set up here, it tells us that it's connected to a remote SFTP server. So what happens if we interact with these files here? Let's say um, we're gonna delete these two files we're a user with those permissions, so we're, we delete. What happens on the remote? Let's refresh and see. They are gone. So now we see the same files here as here once again. How about if we upload? Let's upload one file here. There's new file 14. A quick refresh here, and we see that file is here um, automatically. And note too, I've got a, uh, uh, another FTP client here. This is FileZilla. So um, let's hit refresh and let's go into this folder. So there's SFTP server, same one that we're seeing here. So this is a user, a different user than this administrator connected to this folder. So these two clients are looking at the same folder and this is the remote server. So now we're looking at this in three different locations. And what if our uh, FTP user uploads a couple of files? There goes those files. Let's check the remote. There they are. And we'll, of course, 
refresh the web interface again. There are those files. And if new files appear on the remote, so let's put some new files back. We'll just put a couple of those back that uh, we deleted earlier. The next time our FTP user logs in, there they are, or our web user, of course, any of the protocols. So you can connect to this folder using any of the protocols that we support, SFTP, FTP, WebDAV, and always have access to the files that are actually stored on the remote. Note they are not stored here. You're just seeing them here. They're stored on the remote. And what happens if our FTP user wants to uh, upload an image file that we want to preview? So we've got this image file uploaded. We're just gonna double check and make sure that it's on the remote. There it is. And now we're gonna go back to our web interface and there's that file. What happens if we try to preview this? There it is. The preview generates just like any other file that you might have stored on your files.com site. And we talked about saving money and saving time. Let's imagine that all these files, instead of 14 bytes, were 14 gigabytes, just huge files. Here, your staff has access to see these files here you don't have to actually store them here and use up storage space or bandwidth pulling them across. And when your users need them, they can select the ones they need rather than having to download all of them. Uh, they can select just the ones that they need and say download and there they go. And so you're saving bandwidth by only interacting with the files that your users need rather than having to download and store all of them and saving time by taking advantage of the secure, the folder settings, the security settings and the user settings that you have already set up on your files.com site. You don't have to duplicate them to other servers or even try to uh, build workarounds for servers that don't even have these features. So uh, this is remote server mount, uh, one of our new features that is already proving very popular. Thank you for watching our video series. If you would like to contact us to learn more, please don't hesitate. You can reach us by email at support at files.com or using our 800 number at 1-800-286-8372 or if you happen to be logged into your files.com site as an administrator, you can click on your username in the upper right corner and use this contact support form to generate a ticket.